Welcome back to the final leg. So today we're just gonna be recapping the Zurich Diamond League, the Diamond League final that just went down. Some amazing performances across the board, of course, because this is the Diamond League final, but some athletes have been tapering off, right? Because it's been the very long season, world championships were earlier. I'm gonna be talking about the sprints and the hurdles right now. We're gonna come back later on for another video on the jumps, specifically the women's triple jump. But let's dive in. First off, that women's 100 meter dash. Now, Shelly and Fraser Price, comes here after you know getting second place at the um brussels diamond league she comes here and wins it in 10.65 seconds huge performance for her not only because of the consistency that she's been showing throughout the year she also equals the meet record that's significant right elaine thompson last year set the meet record but because she was able to come back from her slight injury, it wasn't a massive injury, it didn't take her out, but the fact that she's super consistent, the fact that she's, of course, you know, 35 years old, she's been running for so long, has a little injury, but is able to recover and get back on the track running another 10-6, this shows that she's just gonna consistently be rolling, and I think very likely, next year she's gonna defend her world championship title maybe even go into 2024 and win the Olympic gold. Who knows? But I think this is a huge performance for her. I just wanna highlight, Remember in 2012, her personal best was in 2012, entering uh, the 2021 season, her personal best was 10.70 seconds from the 2012 um, Jamaican National Championships. Since then, 2021, right? She ran 10.63 seconds early on. Then she ran a personal best of 10.60 when she beat out Elaine Thompson at Lausanne. This year, she's run 10.6 on seven occasions. This is by far her greatest season ever. I just wanna highlight that if you remember back in 2019, many of us were saying that this was her greatest season ever because she had run 10-7 on four occasions and then eventually won the world championship title. 2022, 2021, both of those blow that out the water. And this season, even though she didn't get a personal best, I think this is clearly her best season ever. And she is approaching approaching GOAT territory in terms of she's already a 100 meter GOAT, but I don't know, she might surpass Bolt overall in terms of 100 meter GOAT, but we'll, we'll talk about that another time. Shelly and Fraser Price, the most dominant athlete in the 100 meter dash, comes here and gets the Diamond League win. Now, moving over to the women's 400 meters. Now, Marley Dupolino, the silver medalist from Tokyo last year, the silver medalist at the World Championships this year, comes here, runs a world leading performance of 48.99 seconds. This is a huge performance. Number one, not only because it's a world lead, beats out Shawna Miller Weibo's world lead of 49.11 seconds seconds, but also she now becomes the 12th person in history to ever break the 49 second barrier. Prior to that, right, 11 women in history had broken the 49 second barrier. Um, the last person um, we had, um, I think it was Guevara, right? She won the 2003 World Championships. She ran 48.89 seconds. Now, Paulino moving into that 12th spot ahead of Chandra Cheeseboro, who was one of the greatest sprinters back in the 1980s. Um, Paulino getting that spot, 48.99 seconds. Huge performance, love to see her here. And really, she's going to be one of the greatest athletes in the 400 moving into the future. Of course, we know Sidney McLaughlin might move into the flat event. We know um, there's a thing, Mo, who might drop down. Who knows? But for now, with Sean and Miller Weibo, you know, kind of re essentially retiring from the event in a sense, I think Paulino is going to be one to watch. Cofield, also from the Dominican Republic, running under 50 seconds for a second time this year. And then Shade Williams from Barbados coming in, another sub-50 performance. Amazing, amazing performances by all these ladies in the 400 meters. Now, let's go over to the women's 100 meter hurdles. Now, this has been one of the top events all year. Women's 100 meter hurdles, really, really um, amazing event because of Tobia Musan, who managed to get the world record in 12.12 seconds. She comes here, Diamond League final. She actually won the Diamond League final last year, gets the win here again, 12.29 seconds, showing that this was no fluke. Amusan really did deserve that world championship title, did deserve that world record, did deserve that windy time of 12.06 seconds. Really great performance. Tia Jones, she's been having the season of her life. I think her personal best entering the season was 12.8 or something like that. For her to be consistently in the 12 fours, um, and of course, 12 three personal best, amazing performance. Brittany Anderson, really consistent, got the silver medal at World Championships. Camacho Quinn, Camacho Quinn has been having an amazing season. She kind of faltered here, finished fourth place. If we take a look at the season though, women's 100 meter hurdles, just all the women and all the performances. Of course, Amusan, world record 12 12, right? Kenny Harrison had run 12 um, 27 just behind her. But looking at the season, um, top five times, Amusan has three of those. Camacho Quinn has been very consistent 12 2 7, 12 3 2, 12 3 4, 12 3 4, 12 3 7, 12 3 9, right? Camacho Quinn has been very, very consistent. 
I think she's going to be, I don't know if she's going to be, she'll probably be number two overall in the hurdles this year, right behind Amusan in terms of, you know, world rankings and things like that. Amusan though, dominating, absolutely dominating the performance list, absolutely dominating the, the year. 12.29 seconds to get the win in the Diamond League here. Moving over to the men's 400 meter hurdles. Now, of course, we didn't have Warholm. We didn't have Benjamin. So it was you know, a little lackluster, but not at all. Allison Dos Santos, 46.98 seconds in the men's 400 meter hurdles. This was a huge performance for Dos Santos. It wasn't his personal best, right? 46.29 that he ran um, at the World Championships. Also, he ran 46 point, um, I think it was 46.8 earlier in the season as well. But this was a great performance. If you all remember, 2018 Samba from Qatar he actually ran 46.98 seconds at the Paris Diamond League and we all thought that was a crazy performance that was the second time anyone had gone under 47 seconds now it's just like whatever almost right so many athletes go under 47 seconds but Dos Santos super dominant he's actually younger than Carson Warholm and Rye Benjamin so he's gonna have a long long career ahead of him along with those other guys as well I really want to highlight Khalifa Rosser here though. 47.76 seconds for second place. He was really, really going back and forth. Oh, not back and forth. He was really pushing, trying to get Alison Dos Santos. Never actually went back and forth with him. But looking at Khalifa Rosser's season, entering this season, Rosser's personal best before the 2022 season, his personal best was 48.65 seconds back in 2018. This year alone, he has broken that multiple times times his second race of the season was 48.26 seconds and then just look at the top top 10 performances that he's had in his entire career they're all from 2022 of course personal best 47.59 47.65 47.68 etc 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 and he is still you know relatively young in the grand scheme of things right he's 27 years old i think so you know he's a little bit older than benjamin a little bit older than trevor bassett but he has really been clicking things off. We're going to see a lot more from Khalifa Rosser in those 400 meter hurdles. Great to see Dos Santos. Great to see Rosser getting those um, top two performances there. Now, let's dive into the men's 200 meters. Now, Noah Lyles gets the win here, 19.52 seconds over Aaron Brown, who ran 20.02 seconds. The season's best for him. Noah Lyles was in a different race. He is a different athlete. He is in a different stratosphere, you know, from everyone else this year. Remember, again, early on in the year, everyone was thinking it's going to be Knighton versus Lyles, Knighton versus Lyles. Lyles really kind of shut that down in a sense. Knighton is definitely coming in the years to come, but Lyles really just dominating the performances here. Now, of course, it wasn't his personal uh, personal best. It wasn't his season's best or anything like that. It wasn't close to a world record, right? He wants a world record. But let's take a look at the all-time performances in the men's 200 meters. If I just click, right, I just want to um, quickly look up Noah Lyles. Look at how he's really starting to dominate this all-time performance list, right? 19.31, right, the American record. He's run 19.46, 19.52, ran this 19.52 again. This is from last year. Um, you know, he's really starting to dive in and break down this all-time 200-meter list. Usain Bolt is still dominating. Let's be clear, right? Bolt is still dominating this all-time list, but Lyles is really, really coming. And if he continues on the trajectory that, you know, he's been, he's been on, especially from this year, we might see something very, very special in terms of how many times his name shows up here. Noah Lyles really putting down the hammer, really showing that he's in a class of his own when it comes to 200 meters this year, getting the win here in that Diamond League final. Finally, Sharika Jackson. Now, Jackson, similar to Noah Lyles, was in a race of her own. Honestly, I thought that the world record was in play. You know, you can kill me for it, but I really thought the world record was in play. She was saying that, you know, she wanted to run something fast um, during the press conference yesterday. But 21.80 seconds, I'm kind of downplaying it. 21.8 is an amazing performance. So her consistency in those sub-22 performances and in those 22 mid to low performances is really, really great. And I think she is going to be coming for that world record. You know, probably if not next year, then definitely the year after. We're going to see what she's able to do. Gabby Thomas, though, I think this is a really strong performance for her. 22.38 seconds. It's not super fast, of course. It's, you know, it's relatively slow in the grand scheme of things, but she's coming back from injury, and look at the field that she beat out. Tamara Clark, right? 21.92 seconds this year. She's This has been the year, um, Tamara Clark's best year ever. Jenna Prandini, one of the top athletes. Kumbunji just came off the European Championship, right? Gaither, right? All these women have really been consistent. But Gabby Thomas coming off an injury, getting second place here, I think this bowls well. Get her back healthy again. We're going to see what she's able to do going into next year. So 
that's just my highlights from the sprints and the hurdles from the um, 2022 Zurich Diamond League final. You know, I didn't touch upon a lot of events, the men's 100 meters, right? Um, the men's 400 meters or whatever it may be, right? Were, I really wanted to highlight some of the events that I really was watching that, you know, put down some amazing performances. Go in the comments below though. Let me know what you love from this Diamond League final in Zurich in terms of the sprints of the hurdle and the hurdles. And again, I'm gonna be coming out with another video talking specifically about the women's triple jump. That was absolutely amazing in my, in my um, opinion here. So go in the comments. Let me know what you think. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again next time. Thanks.